want to discuss the Silver Surfer sequel. Yes, and we've already discussed it. They want you. Yeah, but it's a boring part. I'm tired of being the girlfriend. Listen. Here's the twist. It's a reboot. Okay, Silver Surfer dies and the girlfriend takes over. This is exactly what people want right now. High concept, feminist, lady-led superhero movie. All right? They are gonna go nuts over this. Are you serious? You want me to play the Silver Surfer? She wants me to play the Silver Surfer. Yeah, I sure do. I would even pay to see it. And they're ready to write you a blank check. Who's directing? A hot new British filmmaker. Directed Grimes videos. His name escapes me. <sighs> babe. <laughs> Irma Vep is not happening. All right, don't worry. I'll make sure they pay you out. But, uh... Irma Vep, we can discuss. I mean, I've seen the first four of uh, Irma Vep, the TV series, and of course I've, I've seen the film itself. If you want to see the film, it, I still, I believe, is still available on BFI Player, and I did an introduction for it some years ago, so I look younger, obviously, but it's... But it, only, only a little bit. Yeah, and when you were watching the TV show, I said, look, have a look at this introduction, because it just kind of gives you a, like a, a thumbnail sketch of the film itself. I have really enjoyed the four episodes that I've watched of uh, Irma Vep, partly because I I love the meta-ness of it. Now, m meta stuff can become very, very annoying and, uh, you know, just self-reflexive and, ooh, look at us, we, you know, we're making a movie about making a movie. There is, however, something deliciously fascinating about making a TV series about a filmmaker who is based on the filmmaker who has already made this film saying, I am not making a film series, I am making a serial like the serials that you used to have in silent cinema, but doing it for a streaming platform in what... I think you, there's no way you could look at this and say it's an eight-hour movie, a seven-hour movie, whatever it is, divided up into... I mean, it is, it is absolute... It's a serial, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it, is, it and yet it has... I mean, it's, there were times when I was watching it and I was thinking of um, A Cock and Bull Story, which is the Michael Winterbottom uh, adaptation of Tristan Shandy, in which basically what they're doing is they're doing an adaptation of Tristan Shandy, but but the gag is that Steve Coogan's character hasn't actually read Tristan Shandy, therefore doesn't understand it. So you get these characters who come in who are, on the one hand, very close to... I mean, it's funny when she said the director is basically the alter ego of the actual director, who she said in real life is lovely. He's just really, really nice. But in the in the, in the the TV series, he's kind of insufferable. He is, very much, <laughs> very much so. And very French. <laughs> very French. The scenes with him and his psychiatrist are laugh out loud funny. They are, I thought they were absolutely wonderful. And when he's discussing whether or not watching uh, an episode of The Avengers, which is the Hellfire Club episode of The Avengers, has permanently changed his life. And it turns out he'd already run down the, the, previous, the star of his previous <laughs> yes, movie. But, but as he said, there was a reason. There was a reason. And they, they can't insure him anymore because he's on mood-altering drugs. But he says he needs to be on the mood-altering drugs because the last time he wasn't on them, he did try to run down the star of the previous film. I thought all that was really good fun. I think Alicia Vikander is completely convincing as the person who comes into this world. I mean, for one thing, Alicia Vikander, always remember this, is working in a at least a second language. She's playing an American who is a fish out of water in France. She's talking about working on her French. She speaks Swedish, Danish, you know, she's... And you, if you just said, there we go, is that, who is that? You just go, okay, well, that, that character, she is, she is that character. She's absolutely note perfect, absolutely note perfect. And I thought it was really good fun. I, I have to say, I expected my patients to be tried because I thought, you know, there, there is a sense you could overstretch this, but so far it hasn't been. So far, I'm th I'm four hours into it, and I'm enjoying I'm enjoying it hugely. And uh, <laughs> the actor who comes in, played by uh, how do you pronounce it, Lars Eidinger, who needs uh, who needs to be supplied with the uh, with the chemical to which he is addicted, is very funny. You made a comparison to Call My Agent. It's a chaotic world of French and television production. That was that was all I was thinking. Yeah. So if you you could have been primed for it by watching Call My Agent. Anyway, Irma Vep is available to watch on Sky Atlantic and the streaming service now. Well, did, did did you enjoy it? I mean, yes, yes, fine, fine, fine. Yes, Sorry, I just no, I did. Yeah, yeah, I thought you would. No, 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 no. It's uh, it, it is great, and she is particularly fine. She's fabulous. That was a great video, wasn't it? I couldn't take my eyes off it. No, neither could they. Do they know? Do you think that they can keep up? to date with all things Kermit and Mayer's take by following us 
on our socials because they're all here below. Well, they definitely know it now. That's true. <laughs>